Thank you. As you heard, I'm going to be talking to you about the greatest game you've ever played. In fact, the greatest game that ever could be played. But before I actually do that, what I want to do is talk to you about the two different elements that we use when we play any game. Two elements. One is love. The other is fear. Doesn't matter what game you're playing. Doesn't matter if it's a sport, a monopoly. You're using the, the two elements of love and fear. The thing is, they both have two different outcomes. You see, when you're, when you're using the element of fear, your attention is on the future. Your attention is on the outcome. Your attention is on the winning. Now, I'm not here to tell you that winning's not important. Winning is very important. Can you imagine the Olympic Games, which is starting in one day from today, that it was not important to go and win? Can you imagine the athletes going out there and going, oh, well, it's not really important to win the gold medal. It would, it would make the experience, the intensity of the experience to be surface, to be dull. Can you imagine going to a football game where the two football teams went, hey, it's not about the winning. It's just about, you know, let's just play the game. It's not, who cares about who wins? What would that do to the experience? It would make the experience very dull. So the, the winning is, is, a, is a very important part of it because it creates an intense experience. It creates passion. But here, this is what I'm here to talk about. Besides winning, there is the playing. Playing the game is primary. Secondary is the winning of the game. I'll say that again. Playing the game is the primary. Secondary is winning. Now, the only place that you can play the game is this present moment. You see, the moment that you go and place your attention on the winning, you place your attention on the past or you place your attention on the future. And fear only exists in the past and future. It doesn't exist in the present moment. See, what I want to talk to you about today is the magic that takes place when you're playing any game from the present moment in the present moment, where you can use the energy and the essence of love. The two different energies, love and fear. Let me tell you a little a story to illustrate this. Um, anyone here experienced beginner's luck? Okay, the majority of you have experienced beginner's luck, but for those who haven't, let me tell you my experience of beginner's luck. It started uh, a, a little while ago where I got a phone call from my friend Mikey. And Mikey gave, gives me a call and says, Amir, let me go and teach you how to play golf. You see, he plays golf, uh, not professionally, but he does compete. Okay, he takes it very seriously and goes, I'd love to teach you how to play golf. I said, Mikey, sounds like a fantastic idea. So Mikey goes, look, before we go out to a golf course, let me take you to a range and we're going to have some practice shots. Now, here's the thing. I've got no idea what it's like to play golf. I've got no references. I've never played. The only reference that I have is, or well, I've seen it on TV, you've got this stick thing and you hit the ball forward. That's the only references I've got. So I've got no goals. I've got no expectations. I'm completely open, which allows me to be completely in the present moment. Uh, my attention is not on an outcome which is future related. My attention is not on, on winning because I've got no references which allows me to be completely open to the experience I'm having. So anyway, I go along to experience this, uh, this golf and uh, I rock up there and uh, Mikey, you know, he says, look, we, he, he rented a hundred balls we, uh, from the golf range and we put the hundred balls down there and he goes, you know, I just want you to just take some uh, shots, Amir, and uh, I'll see where you're at. And I said, all right, fantastic, sounds good. You know, give me the bat. He goes, it's not a bat, it's a club. I go, right, give me the club. So he gives me the club. Here we have a club, an eight iron, and this is exactly what he gave me. And uh, so Mikey goes, look at me, I just want you to take some shots and I'll, I'll see where you're at. And I said, fantastic. So he puts a ball down, doesn't give me any instructions. I have no goals. I don't know how far the ball's meant to go. I've got no reference points. I am completely open to the experience I'm about to have. What does that mean? It means I'm open to hitting the ball and I'm also open to missing the ball. I am completely open to the experience I'm about to have, which allows me to be completely open to the present moment. So guess what happened? He puts the ball down, doesn't give me any instructions on how to hold a club or anything, he just goes, hey, have a go. So I line up, take this shot, and it goes straight, it goes great distance, and Mikey looks at me like this and goes, 
do it again. And all I felt once I hit the shot was that was fun. You know, when you're playing and doing something you love, the energy of love is fun. I felt, yeah, that was fun. I didn't care how far the ball went because I didn't even know if that was a good shot or not. But it felt fun. So he puts the next ball down. Line up again. He goes, take another shot, Amir. Take another shot. It goes great distance again. You know, it, it goes straight. It took flight. And I felt that was fun again. And you know what Mikey said to me? He goes, do it again. Did it again. He goes to me, mate, you had me on, didn't you? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you've played before. I said, no, mate, I've never played again. I've never played before. He goes, okay, put another ball down. Let's try another shot. So in the moment where he said you've played before, he said, you're good. Because when I said I've never played, he goes, you're good. In that moment, I started to think to myself, oh my God, he plays competition. He thinks I'm good. I've never done this before. I wasn't even trying before. In that moment, where I had no thoughts because I was completely in the present moment. I was only having thoughts of the present moment. I had had thousand and one different thoughts fill up my mind going, oh my God, this is maybe my purpose in life. Maybe this is, oh, maybe I'm the next Tiger Woods. Maybe I found my purpose. And so I put the next ball down and he goes to me and I said, let me show him what I can really do. And then I'd notice things change. I started to grip now tighter. I started to take my time. I I started to try to focus, where before I wasn't even trying to focus. I started to create a goal, and I thought, well, if I got the ball that far, then I can get it even further now, because I wasn't even trying before. Let me show him what I can really do. And I would do these ones, you know, taking my time. You know, where before I would just take the shot. I wouldn't even think about it. Now I'm thinking about the shot. Now I'm focused on the results. Now I am in the future. Did that, the ball's still sitting there. He goes, I knew it. It was just beginner's luck, mate. And I said, no, mate, give me the other 97 balls. And I'm show, I'll show you what I can do. All 97 shots into the trees, roll around in the, on the floor, air swing after air swing. Thank you. So here's the thing. I want to tell you another story that, that perfectly illustrates this because I know goals are important. Outcome is important. Winning is important. Like I just gave you the example at the beginning of my talk. It is important, but it's not the primary essence. It's not the primary driver. It's secondary. It comes naturally for when someone's doing what they love. So anyway, I, I, do, I run this retreat. Up, uh, I ran it last year in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales, Australia. And I uh, had about 30 people in this retreat. And I wanted to give them an example of what I'm talking about. So it was on a golf course. So I said, hey, guys. Let's go out on the golf course. We went out on the golf course, and I gave these 30 people all an experience of, of golf. Can I have the club again, please? So some of these people had never played golf before. In fact, I remember this one girl, her name is Finette. She goes, Amir, how do I hold the club? How do I hold this? She's like this. I said, Finette, I don't want to give you any instructions. I just want you to put it on the ground and pick it up how you feel to hold it. She puts it up, holds it like this. And I would give these people little instructions, like I would get them to be present, okay, and get, get them present, take a deep breath. <sighs> they would get present, and I would say, I want you to focus. And I would give them a target, just a, a feet in front of them. I said, hit the ball with my feet. They would hit my, with the ball with my feet. And then I would uh, t take the target away. I would go a couple of feet away. And then further and further. And they would naturally hit it. Even though they never played golf before, they would naturally hit it. But everyone had a capacity. Everyone reached their maximum capacity. Some people would, was 15 feet. Some people played golf before. It was 30 feet. When someone, and some people was even further than that. But here's the, ex here's the little experiment that we did. I said, so here you are. You're all present, yes? They said, yes. But you all have a target, a goal, yes? They said yes. And I said, the target and goal is in the future because you haven't accomplished it yet, right? And they said yes. I said, when you're hitting the ball, what, what's your attention on? And they said, my attention is on the goal and the target. And I said, that's in the future, isn't it? And they said, yes. I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to remove the target, completely have no goal, and then hit the ball. And I want you to see what happens. Now, everyone has their, their, their capacity of where they would reach. Okay, everyone had a look, maybe it was 15 feet. Let's talk about Finette. She maybe had 15 feet. 
okay? And so I told Finette, listen, Finette, I want you to have no goal, no target. I'm going to remove the targets in front of you. And just to make sure you're not cheating, I want you to close your eyes when you're taking the shot. This was an amazing little experiment. My friend Chris Barkway told me about this. So we did this experiment. And uh, so Finette would line up just like she was doing with everything else, but instead this time she had no goals. And she closed her eyes like I instructed her to just to make sure she's not cheating. Okay, so now she can't make the ball go in. She's got to allow it. She takes a shot. With her eyes closed, the ball goes double and for some people triple without a goal. Because it allowed them to be completely in the present moment. There is a magic that takes place when you allow yourself to be completely here. We're not, you see, the greatest game that you ever play is the game of life itself. All the games you play in your life are a reflection of how you play life. And let me tell you something about life. Life is a game that you cannot win. It's only a game that you can play. It's not a game that's about competition. It's a game that's about completion. When we continuously place our attention on the future, we use our fear essence. Possibilities come from love, not from fear. When you watch children play, do they care about the outcome or the future? No. A newborn child just cares about playing. When you watch little puppies play, little dog play, do they care about the future? No. They're just, they don't care about the outcome. They just care about playing. If they drop the ball, it's okay. When someone has a near-death experience, when they come back, what do they all have in common? They all want to do what they love to do and want to live for the moment. Is there a clue? Did they experience something when they had a near-death experience? You know, yesterday morning I was watching um, an interview. I was uh, having breakfast. I was on the hotel there, and uh, there was an interview of the Olympians. And they were asked, is there any advice that you received from old Olympians? And you know what they said? They said, yeah, the advice was to have fun because it will go quick. So my advice for you is to have fun because your life will go quick. It doesn't matter if your name's Sally, Andrew, Jamie, Patrick, Ali, Muhammad, whatever, wherever you're from, we're all playing the same game. Don't let it slip by you. Thank you.